I have um, Bamboo Lab P1S and an A1, and I keep seeing these ads for this Panda Nomi, and I thought, oh, that's kind of cute. Um, don't really want it on my print head, but uh, I thought, you know, it'd be good. The P1S is not very good for monitoring um, the, the front control panel. It's not the greatest, so I thought, hey, I just thought I'd mount this on the front. But then digging around, see the pricing of these things just for the screen, because um, I'm going to print, uh, you can see it here, I'm going to print my own um, holder for it. Um, thought, nah, that's a lot of money. As I dug around, I noticed that um, Big Tree Tech has multiple versions of this. They have um, the Nomi and the Nomi 2. This I'm showing the Nomi 2, which is very similar um, for the Voron, but not for the A1 P1S. And I thought, well, okay, what's going on there? And when I looked at the, uh, the, the Nomi 2, yeah, it's a different piece of hardware from the Panda Nomi. Let me just scroll over here, which is a different design. Uh, and, and there's a reason for that. The, the, the Nomi 2 for the Voron actually has additional sensors. I think it has an accelerometer as well as uh, touchscreen. That's the biggest thing, touchscreen. So, okay, that's not going to work. But as I was digging a bit further, I noticed that um, Big Tree has the Nomi itself, just the Nomi, um, um, <clears throat> the Nomi 1, actually, they call it. And I found this actually looking at GitHub and the different source codes because uh, I was thinking about doing this. So they have a Nomi 1. Nomi 1 is the exact same piece of hardware as the Panda Nomi for the Bamboo Lab. But if you try to buy the Nomi 1, um, and I've got an Amazon link here, uh, Nomi 1, you know, calls it out specifically for the Voron Stealth Burner. Well, guess what? It's not. It works for both. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually really easy. Um, a little bit of download of, of firmware <clears throat> or upload of firmware to the device. But um, anyway, for 20 plus bucks cheaper, I thought I'd take a stab at it. <clears throat> so I bought this one from Amazon yesterday, came overnight. Um, and uh, then went digging around and actually found the actual uh, firmware for the Pendanomi, which is here. Um, <clears throat> by the way, all these links will be in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the description. Um, so all you need to do is really quite simple. You need to download the Espresso uh, Flash Download tool, which is here, and I'll show you how to use that in a second. Uh, really easy instructions here. Again, links in the description. You download the firmware, 1.0.2, the three bin files to start. Um, you can download this on your phone later and I'll explain to that why. You'll need this after, but for the first part it's these three. So I'm gonna walk you through this. Um, it's really quite straightforward. Again, as you can see here, I've got the the Nomi, right? Um, that is really the same hardware again with no firmware on it. I've actually, actually, I've gone through this and it actually works fine, but I'm gonna do it again for to help you guys with this. So let's start with this. I'm gonna do the open up the, the flash download tool you will see here some settings. So you choose ESP32, leave the rest the same. So develop and UART pops up a window. Now you will not see um, these three files here. I already preloaded these, but essentially those are the three files that I just mentioned um, in the Pananomi firmware. So you download the three bin files, um, the bootloader first, the partition second, and Pananomi version 1.0.2 third. Um, this is key as well. You have to enter these values, the hexadecimal memory location, 0x1000, 0x8000, and 0x10000. So you enter those settings. Um, I had found another link that suggested that you have to download at 80 megahertz <clears throat> for SPI speed. 40 may work. I noticed that when I did it, it threw an error, but the actual, um, this guy works fine. It still works fine at 80 megahertz. Um, leave these the same. So SPI mode is DIO. Do not change bin. Leave that as it is. Basically, um, select your COM port. You may have to double check that, um, but uh, when you plug it into USB, which I've done on my computer, uh, baud rate, you know what? You could probably do different ones. I've actually been doing it at 115.2, and that usually makes a pretty stable transfer, especially when you're transferring um, you know, images and, and uh, firmware images. I don't really want to speed that up in case it flakes out, because you don't want to uh, brick the thing um, if something goes wrong. So I'm going to leave it slow. I will you know, the, the with the technology we have, I'm going to fast forward this so you don't have to sit and wait, but I'm going to start that process. You'll see that in this window here, it's showing, it's checked those three memory address, it's good. And essentially now what it's trying to do is connect. Oh, I just made a mistake. I think I need to put it into bootloader mode. So I'm going to stop this for a second. 
my bad. So I'm going to show you on the screen here. Over here, there's the button, the bootloader button right here. It's, I think it's also a reset button, but basically take out, unplug the USB so it's powered down, push and hold the bootloader button, plug the USB back in. You'll see the LED comes on. Let go of that. Leave it be. And then we'll start that again. Now it's syncing. Now it's connected. You'll see it has detect info shows up. Um, and it is now starting to download. So you gotta wait for this guy to fill up and then this will show finish. Do not touch, unplug, or um, do anything. Um, let it go through the process of downloading that firmware. Now let's fast forward. All right, so that's finished now. You'll see here it shows finished. So we're done with this. We've downloaded um, all the um, firmware and boot information or bootloader stuff to the actual unit. So you can close this window. I'm going to unplug the USB now and plug it back in. And if we've done our job right, you should see the screen come up with a QR code. There we go. <clears throat> so next step, <clears throat> I'm gonna shift over here to the other view. Open up your phone. Get your camera app out. I'm going to try to do this. Give me a second here. Try to do this so you can see. So I've got to scan that QR code. This was a bit flaky last time I did it, trying to get it to actually connect to the Wi-Fi. So join, join the Pandanomi Wi-Fi. Sometimes it doesn't automatically trigger on the phone to actually um, open up the, the window. So you just go to settings, go to settings. You'll see it's on Wi-Fi, then it'll trigger. So. Um, English assumed if you're gonna that's your language go for it next so it's gonna now search for uh, Wi-Fi networks it's found it so I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi and enter my password one second here off screen keep in mind that you need to have the Pandanomi Wi-Fi on the same network <clears throat> that your printers are on. So um, if it's 2.4 gigahertz, then put it on that network. Don't put it on a separate one, you won't see it. So that guy's showing connected. Um, <clears throat> this says scan or manually enter to bind the printers, but I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it on the app. So we're gonna scan for printers now. Again, make sure your printer's on, whether it's an A1, P1, P1S, or your X1 Carbon. Um, I've only got my P1S turned on right now, so that's all it should find. It takes about 30 seconds for it to find the printer, so let's let it do that. And you'll see that the Pandanomi's doing the same thing. Get those out of the way. It, once it finds it, the printers, however many you have, it'll drop down or you'll be able to choose that in the printer select. So it says scan complete. Let's see what we found. I found my P1S, got a serial number there. I'm gonna just pull this away in a second, enter my access code. You can get your access code from the printer itself um, in the, I think it's in the Wi-Fi settings. Um, so go look at that. I think you can do it manually as or automatically as well using the app, but I'm just doing it this way because it just works. It also would have detected your printer's IP. So now that I have that, I'm gonna bind. So it's gonna bind. And it didn't like that. So let's try, I got the access code wrong. Let's try again. It's just weird. The binding didn't work with access code, but it did. Anyway, we're good. So now what you do is you go into settings because it's throwing an error here. It's an invalid, let's try in a second, invalid image file. So that was that fourth file that I referred to you over in here. Pandanomi version 1.202. image. So <clears throat> I've already downloaded that file onto my phone. So give me a second here while I go find that. Uh, choose file. It was buried last time, so I gotta go search for it now. There we go. I got it here. <clears throat> so download that. <clears throat> it automatically starts updating. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm gonna fast forward that as well because 
don't need to sit through this. So again, in a nutshell, I've got the same piece of hardware with <clears throat> the Voron Nomi version that was initially loaded on this preloader when I bought it. So I just had to erase that. And I'm just uploading the Pananomi for the bamboo printers onto the same hardware. Um, it's all good. Um, <clears throat> already tested it already ran the print through and it did its thing uh, showing the various statuses of the printer one day I actually might see if I can get this working on a larger screen I have a whole ton of these screens uh, different displays and whatnot on my uh, my inventory so there we go we are done so now it is waiting for a print job to start and we're good to go so maybe what 15 minutes of time save 20 bucks of course if you're not into this kind of stuff, by all means, just go buy what you want to buy, buy the whole kit, whatever. Um, this is for those that like a little challenge, an easy one though. This is not very difficult, especially if you dabble in the world of um, ESP32s and Arduino and um, platform IO and all that. Um, this is stuff we do quite often. So again, I will post the the sort of instructions with links into the um, into the description. There, I've also got a link to. Um, uh, the actual one I bought from Amazon Canada uh, at 30 bucks, which is a good deal. Um, maybe you can find it cheaper, but again, all you got to do is let me just flip over here again is look for um, you obviously check them all. Like if you find um, the actual Pananomi, you know, and it's cheap, then you don't have to do any of this. I just found that I couldn't find just the screen uh, for the same price. It's it's 50 bucks plus on Amazon everywhere else, but by looking at this version, the Nomi, forget about the two here, but looking at the Nomi version um, on Amazon, sorry, my bad. Um, that is this one, my bad, I was there. 30 bucks, right, for the Nomi one. And all you gotta do is what I just walked you through. Straightforward and simple, and you now have Panda Nomi for your bamboo printers. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if you wanna see more of this, guys. Thanks, ciao.